In this life of chaos and confusion, there's one thing the people of the world agree upon, a purpose that unites us all. Our boy, Will Byers, doesn't get the justice he deserves. On top of barely surviving the upside down, being possessed, and then having the mind flayer quite literally be roasted out of him, he's got his sexual preferences to figure out. But we might be closer than ever to getting the answers. First up, what Noah and the cast say. Let's talk about the actor's own stance on the subject. Noah Schnapp has always been quite present present around the conversations about Will's sexuality. And in the press tour for the promotion of Stranger Things 4, he was again bombarded with these questions. In an interview with Variety, where he was asked whether or not Will was gay, he said that his sexuality isn't ever clearly talked about or blatantly addressed, and him being different than his friends could be him finding it hard to move on from their childhood, not necessarily him being gay. The way Noah sees it, people can interpret it however they want. That's some bad news for people who are waiting for a massive rush Robin-esque coming out scene for Will. The good news? Considering his recent viral tweets in which he declared himself a biler shipper, Noah himself interprets it like the rest of us. Schnapp's bestie, Millie Bobby Brown also shared her thoughts saying that we shouldn't really put any labels on anyone and just see Will's character change and grow as a person. On the other hand, David Harbour and Finn Wolfhard were a tad bit more mischievous about the whole thing. In an interview where David, Winona, and Finn were reacting to fan stories, someone had suggested that Will and Elle might become a thing. To this, David responded saying that Will is indeed interested in someone from the group, but it's not Elle, and Finn confirmed that it'll be revealed soon. Hmm, wonder who that is? Looking at you, Mike. The big guys themselves didn't stay silent on it this time. They actually echoed what a lot of Stranger Things enthusiasts have been saying. Sean Levy reminded the fans that nothing on the show happens accidentally, and every character's story has a lot of careful thought put into it. So let's trust the creators and the actors, be rational about this, and relax. Alright, that's done. Now it's time to psychoanalyze every little hint we got throughout the show. But first of all, Season 4, things are getting serious. Unlike the previous seasons, Will's emotions were actually pretty obvious this time. Nothing's been said so far, not with words, but Noah's eyes were a little too telling. And in case you need reminding, the eyes, Chico, they never lie. So there were two things fans have been speculating from the very beginning. One, he's gay. Two, he likes Mike. Now we agree with Millie about the first one. Labels aren't important or required, but season four has almost confirmed that he's interested in Mike. How so? Well, all the scenes together were aggressively sus. Being the third wheel has become second nature to the poor boy at this point, but this time it was different. The way he phrased his concerns about Elle misleading Mike, saying it wasn't what he deserved, and the way he was just out of it the whole time. You could kind of see that he was a bit jealous. Some fans think that might be a bit far-fetched, that he was just mad because he was being ignored. But some other things can be neglected. Take Will's painting, for example. We don't really know what it was, but clearly it was something special and was meant for Mike to see. More than just once, we see Will's gaze following Mike with a mix of longing and sadness, like the time Mike left the table to give Elle her breakfast and talk to her, and later, perhaps more unmistakably, when they're digging the grave for the unknown hero, Agent Man. In fact, this scene gave us those lines he says to Mike that are being talked about a lot. He tells him how hard it can be to open up about your true feelings towards someone because you fear you'll lose what little of them you still have left. This has to mean something because too many LGBTQ plus people relate to this for them to have put it in there for nothing. There are definitely two sides of the story. What most people on the internet have gathered from their dynamic is that Mike isn't entirely oblivious of Will's feelings. He kind of knows something's up with him. This should explain how cold and distant he was at the airport, meeting his friend after so long. Long. Later, that moment where he apologizes to Will and suggests they be best friends again was a bit too emotionally intense as well. It might not be proof, but it is something to think about for sure. Another nod to Will's potential queerness was in the first episode of Volume 1, when he displays a look of utter bewilderment when a girl in his class tries to hit on him. Also, the hero he'd picked up for his class presentation was an American mathematician and scientist, Alan Turing. Why is it important, you asked? He was gay and was prosecuted for homosexuality. And remember, no detail in Stranger Things is a mere accident. Now, Season 1 and 2, the setting of the scene. The Duffer Brothers had this cooking up right from the start. It was actually said that while writing the characters, Will was described as something along the lines of a shy kid with a confused sense of his sexual orientation. Joyce tells Hopper that he's different than other kids and he's sensitive. We see that school bullies also target
target his very characteristic of his and use mean words to mock his alleged queerness. When he went missing, Joyce also revealed that even his dad called him slurs and bullied him because he too thought Will was queer. Even back then, little Noah had also jumped in the conversation, saying that a good show leaves the audience with some questions unanswered and that he wishes the Duffers never answered the question. While during most of season two, our poor little munchkin was being tortured, there were still little hints that only the very keen observers pointed out. The first was when Will fell into his upside down episode on the trick or treat night, and he didn't call out for his mother or brother, but for Mike. In the first season, when Nancy gets stuck there, she calls for Jonathan and they end up together. Could this be a parallel? Later, we see how much he trusts him when Mike's the first person he confides in about the shadow monster and his now memories. In this season, Jonathan also talks to him and tells him that he shouldn't feel the need to be like everybody else. He should be confident if he likes different things than other people. In the last episode, Will is also quite hesitant to dance with a girl, and when he does, he looks uncomfortable, and the song playing in the background is saying, every smile you fake. Next, season three, not so subtle. This was the season when everyone was exploring relationships, and so we got a much closer look into Will. He was quite visibly annoyed by his friends only talking about their romance, which is understandable. We've all been there, but what stood out the most was his fight with Mike, in which he famously fired back at Will, it's not my fault you don't like girls. This clearly hurt Will so much that he went and destroyed Castle Byers in that heartbreaking scene. The dialogue was too direct to not mean anything, so fans became more confident about their predictions. And now, after the first volume of season 4, it seems they weren't that far off. And now, the case against it. Not everyone agrees with the theory that Will is queer or has a crush on Mike. The people who have this opinion think that Will had to go through so much that he's now different from everyone else. Also, after he recovered from all the upside-down damage, he just wanted his friends back, but saw that he had changed and moved on from things he liked. According to some, this explains his odd behavior with Mike this season, the fact that he's all grown up and Will himself hasn't figured things out yet. In any case, we think Will needs to receive back the love and care he gives to others. Now, in other news, a mom bro. Turns out everyone calling Steve Harrington a mom wasn't all that far from the truth after all. Caleb McLaughlin, his younger co-star, actually called Joe Curie a real mom bro, commenting on a TikTok. The video that resurfaced was Joe telling Finn to ignore the host's distasteful comments about his name. Next, Winona's impressed. Winona Ryder recently praised all the kids on the show, calling them magic, but there's someone who has impressed her beyond comparison. It's the amazing Sadie Sink. We weren't the only ones blown away by her performance. Winona went on to compare her to Liv Ullman and called her the next Meryl Streep. Lastly, Gaten's major spoiler. Get out of here, Tom Holland. Gaten's out here spoiling stuff six years in advance. Yes, a 2016 interview recently got viral in which he's talking about fan theories and one he brings up is almost exactly the same as Vecna's origin. This show has got some really smart fans. That's a wrap for this video. See you in the next one.